Welcome everyone, I hope I find you all doing great today. Now let's start off this video by me asking you a question. Have you tried the RPR EVO in Infinite Warfare? Well, what's your answer? For me, I've been using it for the last few games I've been playing and getting a bit more familiar with the gun and I think this is a really good gun in Infinite Warfare. I think it's a bit of a sleeper gun. I've seen other people use it, but actually not a huge amount. I think I've more seen people using it because they've got one of the variants of it. But I think this is a really good gun. I want to talk a bit about it in this video. But first of all, a few words about the map I'm playing, Retaliation. Now, when I started playing Infinite Warfare, the full release of the game, this was one of the first maps I actually played on. Since then, that's obviously a few days ago now, it's only come up for me, I think, like twice. I think this is the fourth time I actually played it. When I first played it, I was quite struck by the visual design. It's a really nice looking map. But I didn't think it played too well, I didn't think there was too much structure to it. But that just goes to show you that your first impressions of a map are not always right. Now that I've played it about four times, I'm a little bit more familiar with the layout and I've seen a lot more of the sort of pathways, tunnels, corridors and stuff that you can go on. And I think there's more to the structure of this map than initially appears and I'm growing very fond of this map. I think the more I play it, it's one I'm going to get really fond of indeed. But back to the RPR EVO. Now, if you played Call of Duty Ghost, you'll remember the Ripper gun from that game. It was a DLC weapon. Whether or not DLC is a good thing, we'll leave that for another topic. But I think you could pay a small amount of money to directly purchase this gun. It may have been included in some of the map packs as well, but I think you could just purchase it for a small fee on its own. And it had these two modes. It's got the SMG mode and the assault rifle mode. And hey presto, move forward a few years, now we find the same gun in Infinite Warfare. RPR, I believe that will obviously stand for Ripper, and EVO, perhaps an evolution of the gun that we used in Call of Duty Ghosts. But I really liked this gun. Now, quick word here about the Thor. For some reason I couldn't move my aim up any. Now, it's maybe just lack of experience at the early days of Infinite Warfare using the Thor, but I just could not get my aim on those players. And I'm sure when I've used it before a few times, the aim, I could move it around a lot more. So I don't know what the issue was there, but I'm sure I'll figure it out in future games. But this gun is really good. If you're wondering what I'm using, I've, I'm only using the foregrip, quick draw, and extended mags. I want to try out more of the attachments because I think this could be an absolutely awesome gun. I think it's pretty awesome as is, but I, I think maybe with some different attachments, I may be able to fine tune it and make it even better. Now, this gun is really good. I think the key to using it is knowing when it works best in SMG mode, the sort of range and then being able to switch to assault rifle mode at the correct time. And I think part of doing that is some map knowledge. You need to be pretty familiar with the maps, know the sort of points you're going to be encountering enemies at short range and at sort of medium to long range, and being able to switch between the modes uh, as you see fit and hopefully in advance of encountering enemies. You definitely don't want to get caught out switching between modes when you're in the middle of a gunfight or running around a corner or something because that's probably going to get you killed and you may dislike the weapon. But if you get familiar with the weapon, use it wisely, use the modes correctly, I think you'll get a lot out of it and really enjoy it. Now, as we get towards the end of this video, I was feeling a bit pinned down in this area and I think I get a warden calling in so when we're in that little building, I think I try to hold my ground and I managed to fend off quite a few enemies and I think you may see me switching to the Ripper SMG mode just at the end to get the final kill but it was quite a fun actual hectic end to the game for me. I really enjoyed this gameplay. But the actual mechanic of this gun, having it and being able to switch between modes actually adds like a new feature to the gameplay in my opinion. It's something I really like doing. I find it quite satisfying to pick the correct mode at the correct time. Here for example those enemies, I'm, I feel I'm getting like swarmed here at this point if I think about the gameplay but I'm using assault rifle mode here and then I'm aware that there's enemies all around me so I think I'm keeping it in assault rifle mode take them out. You can see the fire rate sounds quite slow, but it seems very powerful in assault rifle mode actually, uh, even through the slow fire rate. There's quite a few guns that have sort of had that characteristic in Call of Duty. But uh, 
when I think there's enemies getting closer to me and when I think I'm in trouble and I'm trying to sort of hold off the area I think I switch it to SMG mode just at the end. Still something I want to try a bit more, working out the different modes and stuff. There you go, switch to SMG mode and bam that quick change paid off. We'd have got that guy uh, two if it was an enemy but he's actually a teammate falling hard on the heels of the guy that was attacking me. But I hope you've enjoyed watching this video. I did pretty nicely using this gun. I'm a big fan of it and I'm going to use it a lot more. So thanks a lot for watching my video and I'll see you soon for another one. Suppose you think you're hot stuff now.